Hey everyone, welcome back to another Where Are They Now video. Today, we're going back to May 2012. And if you enjoy these videos, I have a playlist. They started off as Throwback Thursdays and Flashback Fridays, and now, no matter what day it is, they are Where Are They Now? Where we go back four years to the same month and see what my favorites were back then and revisit them and see if they're still around four years later. So I printed out the description box from that video and I'm just gonna run through the list really quickly. First thing I started with was I did a whole separate video on my biggest May favorite, which was this book. The cover uh, is upstairs, Shane has been borrowing it. This is The Rook by Daniel O'Malley and this one is particularly special because I have an autographed copy there. There is my special inscription and autograph from Mr. O'Malley himself, and it is still a favorite. I've reread it a couple of times since then, and very exciting. The sequel's coming out next month. I will remind you all when it's available, but if you don't want to wait for the reminder, you can pre-order it on Amazon. I got an advanced sample. This is Stiletto. It's not a sample. It's the full book. And it's just as good, if not better, than the original. So check those out. Love those books. Then I talked about favorite people of the month. Um, they're still favorite people of mine. The first one was Secrets Girl 10. We now go by our actual names, most of us, on YouTube. And you know her as Allie Valentine. I'll link her channel below. She's a UK, mostly fashion, well, and beauty. She's pretty even, and designer handbags. Love Allie. Then I talked about Glam Life Guru, who's now known to all of us as Tati, and Tati's really upped her game since then. I think she uploads five days a week, so be sure to check out Tati's channel. I'll link that below. And then the last person I talked about back then was Nurber XO. Nur. Nur took a little break from videos about eight, nine months, and she's strangely enough, back on within the last couple of weeks. In fact, I just got a text from her right before this video started. So I'm gonna give her a call when I hit the stop button. Anyway, go check out everybody's channel there in the description box. Now let's get on to the favorites. I mentioned the Pure Elimination, Pure Elimination, Natural Hydrating Lip Therapy, it's a gloss, in Nude Beach. And I loved this. First of all, the fact that I even liked a lip gloss. I don't wear lip gloss. I have, I have drawers of it that need to be thrown out because who wants to wear a four-year-old lip gloss? That's disgusting. But what was really cool about it was more the packaging than the actual gloss. It has a mirror, ooh, blinding. It has a mirror on here so you can apply your lip gloss without having to pull out a compact. And the coolest bit is that it has a button on the top that um, if you push it, I don't know if this is gonna show up. Can you see the blinding light? Um, it lights up, so you can be in a dark room, and I'm not putting this on my lips. This is four years old, it's gross. Um, and you can do your touch-ups in a dark room or restaurant. And since that video, I went and got another one in a different color, but the reality is I don't wear lip gloss. I never buy lip gloss, but when I do reach for a lip gloss, and I shouldn't say I never wear it. I literally just placed an order this morning on Nordstrom for another one. These are the Clarins Instant Lip Perfectors and they've came out with a couple new shades and I just ordered a plummy, a little more darker shade, a little more pigmented than this. The one I'm wearing is the original 01 favorite lip gloss of all time. And actually I give, have to give a shout out to Lisa SZ09. She was the one who turned me on to these, so thanks Lisa. Next favorite was um, also brought to my attention by Allie Valentine, Secrets Girl 10. It's the pink with a splash, warm and cozy. I still have this. This is the same one I bought four years ago. It's very sweet. It's a little too sweet for my liking, although this is still available. Now my kind of go-to summer scent is the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess. Boy, it's some reflection. It's a little less sweet a little more suntan lotion-y smell, and a little more grown up, I think. So that's my go-to fragrance, and I am actually wearing that right now, but you would not know that. Then I talked about the Hawaiian Tropic, um, no, the Victoria's Secret Beach Sexy Body Shimmer Lotion. Four years, a lot can happen in four years. One of those things is I have no idea where that is. Secondly, I have no desire to shimmer. I mean, I'm shimmering a little bit around here, but I don't want my body reflecting light like I am an extra in a Twilight movie. I'm over that. I still have the Hawaiian Tropic Shimmer Effect After Sun Moisturizer. I don't think, this is just gonna get thrown out. I'm never, I don't want it. If I want some tint to my body, which I always do, I reach for this. It's the newer version of the airbrush legs. Instead of the aerosol can, it's in a um, squeezy tube, much easier to apply. 
and I generally mix this with my body moisturizer so it's not quite as opaque and I'd rather get color this way than add shimmer. It's just not my thing. If I want to glimmer a little bit at night, I'll do some highlighter on my um, collarbone or my shoulders, but not, no. Then I talked about the Hawaiian Tropic Silk Hydration Sunscreen, I have since repurchased. This is SPF 50. I like that it's more of a moisturizer. This is for your body. More of a moisturizer than a sunscreen. It has the sunscreen, but it doesn't feel like that sticky sensation. I am looking for some alternatives for this summer, so if anyone has any recommendations for a body moisturizer that has a decent SPF of at least 30 built into it, please let me know. This is a fun one. The Elta MD UV Physical SPF 41 Tinted Sunscreen. Quite a mouthful. It's a great product. I had never at that time had like what we think of as a BB cream now. This was basically like the predecessor to the BB movement because it was an SPF that you put on your face that had tint to it that gave you color. Well, I no longer have that sunscreen. It's great, by the way. Since then, I morphed over to the, I still have this for, for memory's sake, I can't throw this out, the Pons Luminous Finish BB Plus Cream, which gave that similar tinted effect, but had a much lower sunscreen of SPF 15. This is no longer available. You can sometimes find this in Big Lots or on Amazon, but they haven't made this in a while, so I don't know if you would want to purchase it. It's probably expired. Um, then I morphed into something else, and if I want to have color to my face, you know, like have some coverage and an SPF, I always reach for the um, IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream. It's, I think the official name is Your Skin But Better. I have this in both the Illumination and just the regular version, but this has an SPF of 50 and the coverage you want, so this is wonderful. And then I recently realized, thanks to a viewer pointing this out, that my new Guerlain Lingerie Depot BB Cream, which has an SPF 30, is very similar in coverage and texture, but unfortunately not in price, to the Pons BB Cream. So if you're looking for an expensive dupe for the Pons, the Guerlain Lingerie Depot BB Cream is your, is, your, is your product. I should say that on the days that I just wear sunscreen under a foundation or whatever, the one that I do reach for for my face Shocker, Colleen Rothschild, Daily Defense. Just, it's one of the few facial sunscreens that does not break me out or irritate my skin. Um, as I've aged, I've found my skin is just really sensitive to most of the um, over-the-counter facial sunscreens that are out there, which is a shame because there's some good ones. Next on my list, it's a long list, but we're almost done, was the Hollywood Secrets Fashion Tape. Still in my arsenal, still cannot ever be without it. I love this little case. They're little double-sided, they're basically double-sided tape for fashion, for wardrobe malfunctions. I use them not because I'm worried about something popping out that shouldn't be there, but like um, if I have a little, uh, if I'm wearing a button-down shirt and there's a little bit of a hole gap there, you can't see what I'm doing. You know, if the, if the fabric gaps, I'll tape it. Um, if I'm wearing like a wrap shirt and if I lean, I feel a little uncomfortable that it, it, it opens up too much. Again, it's more to close gaps and make fabric lie flat. Um, sometimes I'll wear a belt without the, like, just around my waist and not in a belt loop. So to make that, the end of the belt lie flat, I'll use that. These are wonderful. And now they're sold, like, all over the place and very easy, like, at Ulta and, um, I'll link it below. But it used to be you only could order these online and a special retailer. Now they're all over the place. I think they're at CVS, Walgreens. Have a look. Um, oh, Sigma E25 Blending Brush. Well... Still use them, still love them, probably still need to wash them. I've washed them since that video. But um, I have a few more of these. These are great. They're dupes for the MAC 217 brush. And I prefer these over the Sedona Lace ones. And I'd say they're pretty much, I can't tell the difference between these and the MAC. So these are great. Um, a favorite back in 2012 is the Jordana Best Lash Extreme Mascara. It worked great for me for a really long time, and the price point was unbelievable. It was like $2.99, I want to say. It was very cheap. But all of a sudden, it just started flaking on me. And um, my latest mascara fave, a little more expensive, but not crazy over the top. It's by Sigma, 
and it's their Sinuosity Mascara. This one's about to be thrown out. I'm just waiting for the tube that I just ordered ordered this morning, along with my Clarins Instant Light Perfector, um, to arrive. This is the Sinuosity formula. This one's more for curl, but I just ordered a different version that's more for volume and length. I can't remember the name of it, of it but I'll link it below. And now, since the May 2012, you can get Sigma at Nordstrom, so you can get those points. It's all good. Um, and then you collect points, and when you spend enough money, then you get cash back to purchase more stuff at Nordstrom. Um, the things I've learned since May 2012. Maybe it was better that I didn't know that for my pocketbook. Anyway, love that. Then we talked back then about an eyeshadow. Victoria's Secret no longer makes eyeshadows, which is very sad. Um, Nurber XO had loved this one. This is the Victoria's Secret eyeshadow single in between the sheets. Um, appropriate name. Now, if you want to dupe this, I went through all my drugstore ones, couldn't find a good drugstore option, but a great pricier option, this is the video where I give you dupes that cost you more money, is the MAC eyeshadow in Sable. They're almost identical. All right, another huge favorite of mine from May 2012 was the Bobbi Brown Concealer Corrector, just the corrector, in light medium bisque. And um, I, then this was before the correcting thing got huge too. It's kind of funny, the trends that have come and gone since then. But anyway, um, I don't like it under my eyes anymore. It gets too caked in my fine lines and I have more fine lines than I did four years ago. So now what I reach for and have been for quite some time is the MAC Prep and Prime. Um, it's technically a highlighter pen in Radiant Rose. It's a very pinky, peachy toned, um, corrector and I wear this every day under any eye under eye concealer. There's not a day that goes by that I don't use this and sometimes towards the end of the day if I'm looking a little tired I'll, sw I'll swipe it on top of whatever I have on and pat it in. It's amazing, it's awesome and wonderful and if you don't have it in your life you should. And then the last thing I want to talk about was a limited, I think it's limited edition, it was a paint pot from MAC called Nubile. And it's just a very neutral, um, kind of pink mauve undertone. What's amazing about this paint pot is I don't think I've opened it in four years and it's still as soft as creamy, as soft and creamy as it was four years ago. So that's kind of amazing. I don't know if this is still available. Um, I think the Maybelline color tattoos, there's a shade that's similar, but my beef with the Maybelline color tattoos is they dry up pretty quickly. So while this is a lot more expensive than the Maybelline option, um, it will last you. And I've had paint pots dry out and you add a little bit of Mac Fix Plus and stir it up and pop it in the microwave and it is like for five, 10 seconds and it's back to normal. So it's kind of worth the investment. Like I've never used, I've used up maybe one paint pot in my entire life. So those were my favorites from May 2012. There's some still around, there's some that need to be thrown out, and there are some new favorites as well. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I've been styling my hair a little bit differently, and I've been using a different tool to do it. This is the T3 Twirl and Whirl, I think it's called.